everyone, to our last program of Monday Astronomy Days. I'm Carrie. I'm an educator at the museum, and I am here with Abby, uh, who is also a museum educator, and we are going to be doing a really fun activity with you today. So I, um, we always start our programs with an icebreaker question, and since today we are designing a planet, our question to you is, if you could only use one adjective or one word to describe a planet, what would it be? So put that in the chat and we will take a look. So Abby, what is your one word? I love this question. My word is beautiful. I think planets are so beautiful. There are so many different colors and they have fun patterns. That's my word. What's your word, Carrie? My word is gravity, because you Ooh. can't have a planet if you don't have gravity. That's very true. Oh, we've got some good answers coming in. We have big, ground, round, cool, hot, nice. So lots Those are of great, great words. words. Very descriptive. I can really picture the planets y'all are y'all are already thinking of. Ooh, oh, yeah. Colorful. Marcel, spherical. That was, I was thinking about using that word, too. That's a oh, really good word. Epic, spectacular, explode. Well, I, well. Hope, <laughs> I hope that's none of our plans today. <laughs> Cold, huge. Huge. I love it. So fun. Those are some fantastic words. Yes, Absolutely. So Abby, tell us about our activity today. Sure, so today we're gonna to be making our very own planets. You will need a couple of things to participate in today's program, but it's very simple. You're gonna need some sort of drawing uh, utensil, like a pencil, crayons, markers, anything like that will do just fine. Carrie has crayons today and I have markers. Crayons today. I couldn't find any markers. So we're, okay. we're, we're going with crayons. Even if you can only find a pencil, that works too. And you'll also need some paper to be drawing on. Ooh, I like your paper, Carrie. I'm ready. You are very ready. It's a fun if shape. You, if you need to go get those things right now, go ahead. We won't be getting started for, you know, another minute. I'm going to talk about some cool things. So while you're getting your pencils, markers, crayons, whatever. I'm going to use your words that you came up with to talk about planets to tell you about three things that a planet needs to be a planet. So there's three things. The first thing is that planets have to orbit stars. So just like our Earth orbits our sun, that's the first thing that a planet needs to be a planet. Number two, it has to be the shape of a sphere. And like you said, Carrie, and other people said in the chat, planets are spherical. So they are round all the way around, just like this basketball. Lovely. And our third thing, it has to be big enough that the ob it doesn't have other objects that are about the same size orbiting with it. So that has to do with gravity, which was Carrie's word. And just like you all pointed out, there are lots of other ways to describe planets. They can be beautiful. They can be amazing. They can, I saw someone put eggs. They can smell like eggs. Literally Venus would smell like rotten eggs if you could walk around Venus. So that's a really good one. Uh, so let's get going with designing our very own planet. I hope you have your drawing things all ready to go. Uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the size of our planet. So we're going to figure out how big or small we want our planet to be. I'm going to be rolling some dice today to figure out just how big our planet is. So let's get going with that. I'm going to switch my camera over so you can see what I'm drawing. And I think we might have a link to, if you don't have a die or dice with you, um, we I think we can drop a link to an online die roller so you can get a different answer than Abby. So your planet can look different. That's a great idea, Carrie. But if you would like to, you can totally just use the number that I'm going to roll. So for this first one, when we're figuring out the size of our planet, we're going to use this scale right here. Can you read that, Carrie? Like, can you see I it? You can. So... One is small, then going to up, up the numbers all the way to six, which is large. 
Awesome. So our planets will be somewhere on this scale and we'll talk about it once I roll my number. Okay, here goes my grand roll. Get off. Oh, I rolled a six. You had a big one. That's exciting. So I'm going to get all the way over here. I'm going to have a very big planet. And I'm just going to draw a circle on my page to get started. Maybe if you rolled a one or if you want a small planet, you can draw it a little smaller on your page. But I'm going to take up as much of the page as I can. Whoa. I rolled a three. So my planet's going to be medium. Nice. So my planet is large. The largest planet in our solar system is Jupiter. And just really quick, I want to show you how big Jupiter is compared to Earth. So if this, I'll show you Jupiter first since I rolled Jupiter. If this basketball is Jupiter, seem, doesn't seem big in my hands, right? But we'll, hold on, this is Jupiter. This turtle here, which is the only thing I had that was a good size, is Earth. So this is Earth compared to Jupiter. I like using a turtle to represent Earth because, yeah. you know, turtles only, as far as we know, turtles only live on Earth. That's very true. Turtles are a great representation of Earth. I also love turtles. And if you rolled a three like Carrie did, three is the number for Earth. Earth and Venus are about small to medium planets. Oop, there goes my basketball. Okay, let me switch back. So now we're going to work on our moons. Our planets are going to get some moons, and we're going to decide how many they get. So can you see that all right, Carrie? Yes, it looks great. Awesome. So this time, if we roll whatever we roll, that's how many moons we're going to get. So if I roll a one, that's going to be one moon, and so on. Okay, I'm excited for this one. I like seeing how many moons things have. Okay, we ready? Oh, We're ready. I only got one moon. That's okay. Ugh, I only got two. Mm. <laughs> we'll be we'll be designing some more planets, so maybe we'll get some some extras. This will be my moon. He kind of looks like an apple. That's okay. I like it. And I have a question for the chat now that I've drawn my moon, and maybe you're drawing yours too. Let me add some little craters. That would be cool. So my question for the chat is how many moons do you think Saturn has? If you have an idea, go ahead and put it in the chat. That's a good question. Oh, Marcel says 47. Ooh, Caroline 47. says six. Wow. Uh, Ian says seven, two. Coco says a lot. Ethan oh, says wow. billions. Wow. Rashawn says 27. Mayella says 60-something, and Autumn says 8. I love those answers. Keep them coming, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you the right answer. So the right answer is Saturn has about 82 moons. Some of them still need to be confirmed, but when they do, they'll be all the way at 82 moons. So if anyone feels inspired to, you can, you can draw 82 moons on your paper if you want to. I have one, and that's okay. That makes my hand a little happier that I don't have to draw 82. 82 is a lot. I don't know if I wanted to draw 82 moons. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. Those are some great guesses. So I hope your moons look awesome. Our next step is my favorite. We're going to be deciding what color our planets have. You ready? I am ready because, you know, as you may know, colors are my favorite too. So. I love colors. Me so where, too. Yeah. This is where having colorful markers or crayons will come in handy, but you can use whatever colors you have on hand. Okay, so this is, if I roll a one, I'm going to get green, two yellow, three red, four blue, five gray, and six is purple. There are no actual planets in our solar system that are purple, but that's okay. It's okay if we get a bit silly with our designs today. Okay, I'm I wonder what, what, what chemical or signature would make a purple planet. I was seeing where some people think that planets could be purple if they have enough purple bacteria on them. Ooh, yeah. that would be cool. So that would, not only would that be a new color for a planet, that would be the discovery of life off Earth, which would wow. be very cool. That would be very cool. Oh, okay. Rashawn, you got blue. I got blue, too. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. So did I. I rolled a four. We're, oh, we're a lot of blue it planets. Was That's awesome. 
So do we have blue planets, Abby? We do. So the, we have three blue planets in our solar system. We have Earth, which has blue because of water. And then Uranus, Uranus and Neptune are blue because of the methane in their atmospheres. That was a great question, Carrie. Oh, and if you can see behind me, pull it up a little bit. I have Neptune oh, yeah. and Uranus up there that are blue. Oh, that's so awesome. So mine is kind of looking like oceans to me, but it could also be methane clouds. Uh, what do you think I should pick? Methane clouds or oceans? Could, it, could you have methane oceans? Ooh, I like that. We'll combine them. Methane oceans. Liquid methane. This might be a stinky planet. Uh, Selena rolled red and they had already started with blue. Selena, I uh, started with red. And then rolled blue. So we're gonna our plans are gonna be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, these are turning out cool. Okay, so my planet has some color on it, and we have one more step where I might add some more fun things to my planet. Are you ready to move on to that next step? Oh yeah, I think we're everybody ready. I think we're ready. Cool. If you're not ready, okay. you can keep coloring. <laughs> Coco says she's not ready. Um, right. but actually, we have a couple of people saying no. So maybe maybe we should uh, talk about a fact, right. a fun fact before we move on to the next step. Oh, I like that. Let's talk about maybe someone else picked another color. I see someone picked yellow. Someone got a yellow planet. Yeah, Reese did. Ooh, Venus is a yellow planet because it has sulfuric acid in its um, atmosphere. So if your planet is yellow, that's kind of like Venus. And is that why it smells like rotten eggs? That is. So cool. It doesn't sound like Venus is maybe such a nice place to visit. We keep picking all the stinky, stinky planets today, huh? I love it. <laughs> Mine's got some cool little swirls in here. What's yours looking like, Carrie? Oh, here. I, I've decided to, well. Oh, I love I was, that. I was just going to do it all blue, but then I saw that you were doing something different. So then I uh, decided to, to do to do um, concentric bluish circles. So Ooh, I like that. We take lots so maybe of my maybe my methane's deeper. Yeah. In the center. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. Maybe I'll add some blue to my moon too, since my moon can have some color. Oh, that's a good idea. I might color in my moons actually. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. A lot of moons have um, special colors to them. Our moon is gray, but some of Saturn's moons have their own atmosphere, which I think. Uh, cool. uh, Selena says nobody lives on their planet because there are too many volcanoes, according to the four-year-old. <laughs> I love that. In <laughs> fact, our next category has some fun things like craters and rings and mountains. So we can Ooh. add some volcanoes too if you want to. That's very cool. These are the things in our next category. Would you like to move on to the next one, Carrie? I think we're ready. Okay, if you're still coloring in, that's totally fine. You can color in the things we're gonna add too. These might be some more colors. Okay, so these are some fun, This I call this category fun features. So we have, if you're all one, you'll get a crater. Two, some rings around your planet like Saturn. Three, some mountains. Four, storms. Five, spacecraft. And six, space traveler. Okay, let's see what we get. And if you get spacecraft or space traveler, you can do like a real rocket ship that you know about or a real satellite, or you can do something from Star Wars or something fun. Uh, so um, we have a question. So... Um... Uh, Shoria is asking, what are rings? So rings are like oh. Saturn. Here, look, let's see. Here's Saturn behind me. Do you see how Saturn has the rings around it? Great question. Here, I have, here's a picture of Saturn. Oh, great. So here are Saturn's rings. So if I roll rings, I'll talk a lot about rings. Um, but... I think there are all there are four planets in our solar system that have rings. Saturn, Jupiter has tiny rings, and then Uranus and Neptune also have rings. Great question. 
Okay, let me roll and see what I get. Five. Ooh, I get a spacecraft. Ooh, how fun. I got four. I got storms. Ooh. I cannot decide what kind of spacecraft I should draw. Does anyone have any ideas? Oh, yeah. What kind of spacecraft should Abby put on her planet? Well, since we are an ocean planet, maybe one that can float. I love that. That Oh, Ethan says the Death Star, and Caroline says a rocket. I like it. Well, the three ideas that popped into my mind were a rubber ducky, because that floats. So (laughs) I'm going to make a Death Star rubber ducky rocket, which, you know, makes sense. Oh, and Autumn has a wonderful question. What are planet rings made of? That is a fantastic question. So the rings can be made of a few different things. Mostly they're made of small rocks. And actually not everything is very small, but compared to the planet, they're small. But rocks or ice or dust or things that are floating around in the the solar system that gets caught in the uh, gravity of the planet. So that's a great question. There's just lots of little rocks compared to the planet that are circling the planet. Great question. Okay, oh, and is- May Ellis wants to know what are comets made of? Oh, that's a great question. I always get my comets and meteors mixed up, but I believe comets are made of ice. Is that right? Yes, I think yeah. you're right. I think they have ice and like rock and dust. Um, yeah, so I think that ice is is one of the things that differentiates a comet. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, that rubber ducky rocket's pretty adorable. And here's my little Death Star attachment. So this is a rocket that deploys a rubber duck that floats on the planet, <laughs> and the Death Star gets deployed into space. That's awesome. Y'all got your Death Monica. Star. And so R confirmed that um, in the chat that comets are frozen leftovers from the formation of the solar system composed of dust, rock, and ices. And that's you, according R. to NASA. So that's yeah. Great, great so, answer. Yeah. Well, and so cool. and Vishan, I got storms. So I'll show you my storms in a minute. How I how I decided to interpret storms on my planet. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be awesome. And do you know what where the biggest storm on the planet is, Carrie? In our planet or on a planet? A planet. Is it the red the red circle on Jupiter? That's right. It is or the red spot, I guess. It's, I guess it's more oval. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. The Jupiter's red spot. red spot. Let's see. Do I have a Jupiter? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so here's there Jupiter's is. red spot right there. Oh, that's awesome. So storms can look like all sorts of things. So I, I'm excited to see yours. Okay, so this is my planet. The last step for this planet is it needs a name. Does anyone have an idea of what to name my planet? I'll recap. It's blue. It's very big. It has one moon, and it has a very interesting spacecraft. And it also, it smelled bad, if that sparks anyone's creativity. It's a stinky uh, planet. Oh, think of some names. Hmm. So while we're thinking of names, Reese has a question. Ooh, Why is the sky blue in the morning when space is black? That is a very good question. We see in the morning, we see our sky, which is through our atmosphere. So it's about the way that we see the light coming up from the sun in the morning. Do you think I answered that well, Carrie, or is there something else? I, I think it's, add? no, yeah, I think it's like the refraction of light is what is how, is why it looks blue. Yeah. And then May Alice wants to know what planets are made of. And that's a good question, too. That is a great question. They can be made of all sorts of things. Um, in our solar system, we have two different types. We have our uh, terrestrial planets, and we also have our giant planets. So our terrestrial planets are made of rocks. So like our Earth is mostly made of rocks and, and you know, very, very hot rocks, but rocks. Um, and then Neptune and Uranus are made of ice, and Saturn and Jupiter are mostly made of gas. So those are great, great questions. Absolutely. Okay, so we have some name suggestions. I so. think I see my favorite name in the chat, and I think it's Death Duckia. I think that is a fantastic name. What do you think, Carrie? All right. Oh, oh there's yeah. also more in there, too. 
All those there are. are. I did duck you. Yeah, that is the best one. And I um, had not, for some reason, not scrolled all the way down. So but we have some really awesome names. So Ben wants to know, why is space black? Oh, well, that's a great question. I think it's because of how uh, big space is and how small the stars are in compared to the expanse of space, right? So there's not much light coming off of these small stars compared to how big space is. That is a and great I'm question. And I'm going to post, I'm going to actually post something in the chat that's a link to an absolutely amazing program that will give you a sense of how big space is. So it's called If the Moon Were the Size of a Pixel, like one pixel on your computer. And then, and so, and then they, um, they've put together this program to show um, how far apart things are in the solar system. And so you travel from the sun all the way, and I've only gotten, I just got past Saturn. It took me a really long time. And there's, and it's so funny, you just scroll through and there's little notes. And essentially the point of it is that space is mostly nothing. Space is, there's just a lot of space and planets are teeny tiny in comparison to all, to all the space that's out there. So here All is right. my final planet. I added Stinky onto it since it's made of methane. <laughs> I like my it. Is Stinky Death Duckia, and it's beautiful. all right. So, well, I'll, let me. I'm going to show my planet because I need a name for mine too. So I put my sun on there too, so you can. What does yours look like? Ooh, I've got my two moons, and those black things are storm clouds with lightning bolts shooting out of them. Wow. So. I need a good name for mine. Mm. And we and, and, and our friends in the chat have a lot of fun names for their planets too. Oh, that's we awesome. Dazix, <gasps> Nodio. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna say that one out loud. Caroline wants to know how did Pluto get out of orbit? And that's a really interesting question, Caroline, because um Pluto does orbit the sun. It's just that its orbit is a little bit different than the than than actual planets. That's one of the reasons Pluto, Pluto got demoted is because its orbit's so funky. But it does still orbit. It still goes around the sun it with does. the rest of the Kuiper Belt objects. And a fun fact about that is its orbit is so weird that sometimes it's closer to us than Neptune is. So normally we're like, oh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Pluto. But sometimes it's Uranus, Pluto, Neptune. Oh, that's, that's, a, I, that is a fun fact, Abby. I didn't know that. Very strange. That is very strange. All right. So we have a lot of fun names. Oh, those are such cool names. And you the, all are in so the creative. Chat. Well, what do y'all think? You want to do it again? Mm. Draw a new planet? I think so. Planet Pickle Puss. <gasps> Whoa. That's a good one, Christine. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You all are awesome. Okay, let's work on another planet. I'm going to do it again, and we're going to do a few things differently, but I'll talk about it when we get there. So this was my first planet, and I'm going to switch over and get ready for our second planet. So if you have another piece of paper, you can start drawing on that. Let me get out. So the first thing we did was we decided the size. Okay, so I'm going to re-roll and see what size planet I get just like last time. I got another big planet. It's going to be huge. What did you roll, Carrie? Uh, hold on. It, it's, it's rolling. It's rolling. I got a three again. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing if not consistent. Exactly. This is my beautiful sort of round planet. Beautiful. So, Abby, why are planets round? That's a great question. It has to do with their gravity. So the planets get so big that gravity will pull everything into the center. And then that makes it round over time. Everything gets smushed. But I think if you look at some planets up really close, they might not be perfectly round in all areas, but it just has to do with how it gets smushed. Well, that's true, right? If you think about our planet, we have mountains, right? And, true. And, um, and, you know, compared to the size of the Earth, maybe even Mount Everest doesn't seem 
that the, that big, <laughs> but yeah. it's still, you know, it still stick up. It's and then still, yeah. Our Mariana Trench, which could go a little into the surface, right? Yeah. How oh. cool is that? Go down. Yeah. So what's happening on the planet is also, of course, affecting its shape. Great point. Okay. Have you have you drawn your circle, Carrie? I did. I've got my nice medium, my nice plain old medium planet. That's beautiful. Do you think we should move on to our moons? Yeah, I think so. So Caroline's asking a question while we move on to moons. Why is there no living things on other planets that we know of? That is a great question. Earth has a lot of very special things that allow it to have life. We are the perfect distance away from our sun to keep us warm. We have a perfect atmosphere that gives us oxygen and things we need to breathe. Uh, we have liquid water, which helps us drink and makes us happy. I love drinking water. Uh, so there are lots of very special things about Earth that other planets in our solar system don't have. Great question. But we, but you know, NASA is True. looking. We are looking. looking. There might, you know, we're looking. So we're probably not going to find life like we know it, but we may find bacteria on, on other planets or moons in our solar system. And the universe is vast. So there may be lots and lots of life out there, but it's so far away from us, we may never know that it's even there. That's a great point. I was only talking about our solar system, but there, you're right. There are so many solar systems and people are looking all over. It's true. And we have a really cool talk later this week called um, Why E.T. Can't Phone Home. <laughs> and it's talking about that. It's talking about the um, Fermi paradox, which is if there's life out there, why haven't we found it? And so some of it... Um, you know, so so if you come to that talk, maybe a lot of these questions will be answered in more detail. Exciting. Oh, tardigrades, right? Oh. Tardigrades are pretty amazing, aren't they, Marcel? They are. They're very cool looking. Okay, I'm going to roll and see how many moons I have. Oh, I get lots of moons this time. I'm going to get six. Oh, all right. I got four this time. So at least so I got more moons, more moons than the first time. Yeah. That's nice. I'm gonna draw my moons over here. And moons can be perfectly round, or it's more common than planets for moons to be funky shapes. Oh, I think I drew seven. Oh well. <laughs> like Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos are really funky chicken nugget looking shapes. Okay, my moons are looking cool. Your moons are looking good, Abby. Thank you. I'm sure yours are too, I just can't see them. And I'm sure everyone else's moons are doing awesome. Uh, okay. So um, so, we, so Caroline, we talked about why Saturn has rings. Oh, so well, why does, I mean, actually that's a good question. Why does Saturn have rings? Why do Saturn, um, Uranus, and Neptune have rings, but the other planets don't? Abby, do you know the answer to that? I'm sorry, I think it cut out for a second. Could you repeat that? Oh, sure. Um, so Caroline's asking, why does Saturn have rings? Like, and, and I was, I was thinking, well, why does Saturn, like Saturn and Uranus and Neptune, have rings, right? But the other planets don't. So do you know? Oh, do you know why? It is a I great question. Not. I do not. I think it. Has I, to I don't do know with, either. <laughs> I think it might just be a chance thing about where they are in the solar system when um, a moon breaks up or an asteroid hits. Um, so that it might just be they were in the right place at the right time. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Maybe maybe R can do some some sleuthing and uh, see if we can find that answer for sure. And then Marcel yeah. wants to know how big is the biggest moon in our solar system, which is another Ooh. fantastic question that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> Me too. I oh, I see our. Oh, our, our, our figured it out. All I right. knew it was Ganymede, but I couldn't remember if Ganymede was on Jupiter or Saturn. But it's on it's on Jupiter. That's awesome. Oh, and it's even larger than Mercury. Wow, wow. wow. that's pretty wow. cool. So it has a moon that's bigger than what used to be a planet, and what is a planet? That's awesome. That is really cool. That's a really interesting fact. Fun fact. Look how much we're all learning today. We're learning so much. <laughs> I love you. Amazing. We learned together. That's great. I okay. know. That's so fun. 
So now that I have That's my kind of learning is learning you do together. Exactly. For sure. Um, it's Jupiter's moon, Coco. Yeah. The Ganymede is Jupiter's moon, which makes sense. The biggest planet would have the biggest moon. It does. It does. It's it's crazy that it's bigger than Mercury. That's huge. I know it is. That's awesome. And isn't it how? Isn't that just to me so interesting to think about? Like as the as the solar system's forming, an object that is bigger than a planet, you know, a moon that's bigger than a planet. So Mercury somehow just gets in the orbit of the sun, but then Ganymede gets in the orbit of Jupiter, right? And I yeah. just think that that's, I think that's really interesting. Very. Cool. Okay, I put out my color tab because I'm ready to move on to colors. Oh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Nice. Okay, so these are the colors again. Um, but also if you want to use a different color or change the colors, you can. And this time, the special thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll twice. So I'm going to get a combination of two colors for my planet. So let's see. That's a which, fun idea. Let's see what I roll. So the first one I got is red. I rolled a three. So my planet's going to be red. And I'm going to roll again to see another color. Oh, I got three again. <laughs> my dice rolled off into space. To the expanses of the unknown. Five. Well, I got purple and blue. So Abby looks like my planet's got that bacteria you were telling us about. Wow. That makes sense. Maybe it has the water and bacteria and there's a lot of life yeah. on the planet. Cool. Okay, I got red and gray. So we've got some. So Ziggy, we're gonna share our we're gonna um stop recording or stop broadcasting YouTube at the end, and then we'll all show off our planet. So everybody's going to get a chance to show their planet. That's exciting. Um, I can't wait to see yours. That's awesome. So Caroline, I don't really, can you, can you explain your question again? It says, what happened to the, um, to the planet? So they used to be near the sun and then break out, but I'm not really sure what the door planets are. Hmm. Um, and then Mayalis wants to know, what's the biggest star in the galaxy? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's so cool. I don't know. I don't I know. know. It's definitely not the sun. Our sun, I believe, is pretty small compared to other stars in our galaxy. So it's wild to think of a sun, a star that's bigger than our sun, right? But there are some. There's a lot. Yeah, because isn't our sun like fairly small? I believe so. Yeah. The yellow ones are pretty small. So maybe we can do some Googling together to find out how yeah. big the biggest star is. My, while we're finding that, my, oh, I see R put it in the chat. Okay. And then, and I, oh, is you, why Scooty? a hypergiant with a radius of 1,700 times greater than our sun. What Whoa. a great question. And then I think, they, um, I think, Helen, it was happened to the dwarf planet. So they used to be close to the sun and then break out. That's a really good question. Um, and I can kind of guess at an answer, but I, I don't know, Abby, if you want to take a shot. All yours. Okay, so I think that the, so, so there's um, some dwarf planets or proto planets. I don't know that they used to be closer to the sun. I think what happens is all this stuff's just floating around out there. And then the sun, which is a really large object, has all this gravity and it just pulls these objects into orbit. And some things, smush together, right, and become planets, and some things smush together and become moons, and some things smush together and become um, sm just smaller objects like asteroids and dw dwarf planets, but um, that's my explanation. I think that's a great explanation. Yeah, and then May also says, is the sun the biggest star in our solar system? It is the biggest in the only so when you say solar system, solar is referring to the sun. So our solar system is all the things that, um, that orbit our sun. And so there are other solar systems, 
would be other stars with their planets and in, in orbiting objects. But our solar system is just our sun. Great point. So my planet down here is very well colored in now with red and gray. You know what? Your planet looks so cool. So Rachel, um, Dr. Rachel Smith is our astronomer at the museum, and she yeah. did a program this morning on a cool program called Open Space, but she was talking about some exoplanet. So that goes back to what you were talking about, Nails. An exoplanet would be a planet that is not in our solar system, that's orbiting a different star. And they are able to get some... They're not, we're not able to see any exoplanets, but we can kind of um, learn about them through different ways. Um, we can do like, like chemical analyses and things like that. And one of the planets she described looks just like Abby. Like the artist's really? like rendering looks just like your planet. It's like a lava planet. It's completely Whoa. molten. <gasps> and, um, and it is really, really cool. And, it, yeah. and apparently, because it's molten, um, somehow it makes, it will, they, they, you know, scientists can extrapolate this information. It will make the sky sparkle. So, if you, <laughs> so, like, the sky would be sparkly. Isn't that just so cool? And there's a, um, if y'all have never seen this, there is a, um, NASA has these travel posters that are just, they're, oh, they're just beautiful that. artist renditions of, um, it's called Visions of the Future. And I'm going to post the link to that because they have one of this <gasps> lava planet in there. Oh, and like, what would it be like? Of course, we could never, they're so far away. Yeah. It would take millions of years to get there. But um, what would it, you know, what would it be like to go and visit some of these cool places? Wow. I added some sparkles to my atmosphere up here. Oh, I Very think cool. that's so cool. That's so cool. Um, I was just about to say my planet would be red, be like Mars, because of the iron in the soil. That's why Mars is red. Ooh. But now I'm going to say it's red because of lava. That's so lava cool. Planet. And you guys can um, watch the presentation of, that Rachel gave this morning. It, it's already up on YouTube if you want to if you want to see the artist rendition of that planet because it was it really struck me. It was really cool looking. I do. That sounds so cool. And then um, Autumn wants to know what was the first planet. Oh, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that one. I don't, I don't either. Know. I don't know if we know. Yeah, I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that. Yeah. One. That may be something that is hard to know, right? Mm. And then Caroline wants to know how many solar systems are there? Well, we don't know that either because we there can't see the entire universe. So, ah, so Ooh. R knows. <laughs> R says the first planet <laughs> was likely Jupiter. Huh. That's so cool. That is so cool. Thanks for looking that up, R. Another reason to love Jupiter. That's very cool. I know. Okay. I'm adding some fun colors to my moons. I like it. Yeah, I, I kind of colored in my moons too. Oh, and I see someone put in that Uranus was the first planet discovered. I love that. I think it was the first planet that we found using only math. I think we found that it had to exist because of math. So if anyone says math is boring or math is useless math found us a whole planet that's pretty cool math is amazing mm -hmm. and math you know and, and math is why we know that some of these things exist because we can't actually see them so i put down i put the poster for the um the lava planet um in the chat for that one specifically but do look at all the posters but yeah it's, it, sh it shows the sparkling skies it's so cool wow that I is love so cool. your sparkles <laughs> those are so <laughs> good <laughs> little tiny sparkles that's awesome. I love that poster. Okay. I have finished coloring in mine. Do you think it's all right to switch to the next one, Carrie? I think we're good to move on. I've finished coloring mine in two, and I took a long time, so probably good. probably few people are as slow as me. We got through some cool, fun facts during that, we too. We did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am going to roll twice again to pick two fun features, so that will be exciting. Mm -hmm. All right. I got another spacecraft, so that's one thing I'll be drawing. 
and I got rings. Oh, that's going to be cool. My lava planet gets rings. Ooh, I got storms again, so we're both getting repeats. I'll show you the cool way I draw rings is to start on one side of the planet, come out to the side of the planet, go all the way in front of the planet, and then loop back to the side. That's a cool ring. All right. My rings are purple. That's fun. Ooh, I All like right. that. What did you roll, Carrie? I had storms in a spacecraft, so my poor spacecraft's going to be going into these storms. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be going in to study some about the storms. Maybe we'll learn something. Yeah, that's good. If my storms are, are stirring up all my bacteria. Yeah, we want to learn about that storm bacteria. <laughs> yeah. What do you think my spacecraft should look like? We had fun with that last time. Oh, yeah. I, I have to draw a spacecraft, too. Ooh. Um, three is mountains, Marcel. Oh, yeah. I think my paper was covering it for a second. Boop. Oh, and Mayel says they also made a lava planet. Wow. So cool. This is, oh, I like this lava planet a lot. I'm going to start out by drawing a, I'm going to draw a little telescope that's orbiting my planet. Maybe it's like a special camera satellite oh. going to take neat pictures of my planet. Like a satellite with a little camera on it. Uh, so, Reese, a space traveler would be someone or something that travels through space. So it could be a human that's leaving Earth and going to a different planet, or it could be an alien that comes from a different planet and is visiting. So you get to choose what kind of space traveler that's you a great question. draw. Just for you, I will draw a space traveler on mine, too. I'm going to draw a turtle. Since we were talking about turtles earlier, <laughs> this is new one very happy turtle. He has his own uh, space suit so that he can survive in space during his journey. And he's taking pretty pictures of my planet. I love it. You never know. Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday turtles will enjoy space travel. <laughs> I hope they would enjoy it. I hope it would be a fun experience for them. Oh, Ethan made Coruscant. Nice. Is that does Coruscant, is that the one with all the cities? Ooh. Ah, very cool. That's so cool. I'm just adding some fun little details to my spacecraft so here. Your spacecraft looks really good, Abby. Thank you. Um Fire. <laughs> so R says tardigrades can survive in the vacuum of space. So maybe one could be traveling to your planet. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very cool. Oh, and we drew a cat in a space suit. It's perfect. Oh my gosh. I love that. Um, and then I was going to say, so on Sunday night, our very last program of astronomy days, we're going to do a Lego show and tell. So mm -hmm. if, um, if y'all enjoy, and it doesn't have to be Legos, it can be, it can be anything you want to show, but we're all going to get together very informally. It won't be recorded and we can have cameras on and we're going to just show each other our fun creations. So, so I hope y'all can join us for that. This is my little tardigrade. <gasps> oh, I love it. I ha actually have, it's upstairs. I actually have a little tardigrade. I could, I could have, I could have introduced. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. Yep. I got it for Christmas. Oh, no way. That's awesome. So Caroline wants to know, are there black holes in our solar system? And if they are, could it affect our planet? Um, <laughs> Abby, I love your little, <laughs> little space helmet for your turtle. You've got air. Um, and Marcel, yes, the link's on the website for Lego Show and Tell, so you can already register. Yeah, and, and, and um, sure, yeah, the water bears are tardigrades. It's just the same name for the same critter. Great question. So, yeah, so black holes. Okay. We, so we don't have any in our solar system because we would not survive that. Am I, I, and I don't know much about black holes, Abby, so I'm, I might let you <laughs> take this one. Yeah, I also did not look into black holes for this program. But from what I remember, Carrie is absolutely right. We do not have any in our solar system. 
Um, and we are happy about that because we might get sucked into them. Um, but we have seen some, sol some black holes thanks to our telescopes and astronomers. Um, I believe there was a really cool picture of a black hole that came out two years ago that you should go look up and see how pretty it is. That's my black hole fun fact, but they look cool. Very cool. But yes, they are yeah. far away. Yeah, so I'm putting the link to Lego show and tell in there. So it's Sunday at 530. <laughs> that turtle looks like he's ready to go. He's getting ready to land on that plane. <laughs> oh, that's a little. Okay. Abby, you're such a great artist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is, I have peaked. This is amazing. Uh, okay. I believe this planet is finished. Uh, it needs a very good name. I think it should have sparkly in it because it's sparkly and it's lava. If anyone has any other suggestions, it might turn into sparkly lava planet. Ooh, that's a good one. And, and I want to invite folks on YouTube to join us in Zoom if you want to show if you want to show off your planet. Um, I think that the link, um, I think R posted the link in there. Um, Lava sparks. Ooh, I see L spark. I made it into lab spark. So it's pretty, it's almost exactly what you said. I love that. Very cool. Lab spark. Nice. This little turtle, I'll put the initials of the planet on the spacecraft. L S. But yes, we would love to see your creations in our show and tell. Yeah. Very exciting. So what we'll do is I, I'll just kind of um kind of do a, um, a kind of do an official goodbye for our YouTube feed and then um, and then we'll stop the the recording and zoom and we can turn cameras on so if you are in YouTube um, just jump on the zoom and we'll we'll get you in here and, and you can show off your planet so before we go I'm gonna show off mine we've been seeing Abby's and mine is not so there's my I've got swirly storms purple bacteria blue oceans lots of moons and a rocket ship is going towards them. Whoa. So, so cool. That's we're mixing things up. So maybe all those storms are going to cause my bacteria to evolve and yeah. we're going to get more complex life. We'll see. Like turtles. Get those some lightning in there. <laughs> um so with that, we're gonna say um we're going to wrap up the official part of our program. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And Abby, thank you so much for leading us through this super fun activity. Thank you. Um, we This is our last program of today, but we have programs for the next six days. So check out um, our website. Uh, you go to the Astronomy Days website. I'm sure R is going to post a link in the chat. And you can register for more programs. And I hope to see you at one of those. Um, I do want to say thank you to our sponsors, North Carolina Space Grant and Pepsi. And also thank you to all of our museum members. So if you're a member, thank you so much. If you're not a member, please join. You get all kinds of awesome benefits. And your membership helps support really cool programs like Astronomy Days. So I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to...